Looking at some of the simple things about Christmas again this week in the second Sunday of Advent, we're going to kind of try to be simple with our view of what it is God wants us to know and understand about himself during this season. The little sentence I would give you this week for the sermon is, A King Simply Born. Last week, I reminded you that the world was simply waiting. And I hinted in there that it still is, that we wait a lot in this life, and that waiting is a part of knowing God's will for us. So it is that understanding the Lordship of Jesus Christ is very important. What God did in Jesus and how he chose to do it, his plan, was very, very important. Uh, some miss it still. Some would think a king would be born in some way that would be overpowering, overwhelming, demanding, even military. But certainly, by force, people would have to serve this one who is proclaimed king. God did none of that. Uh, he chose a plan that we'll talk about on Sunday that, while it is clear that it was his way, it, it is not what we would imagine or probably strike out to do in coming into this world and proclaim God's kingship. The Bible still shows us that people don't get it and don't want to get it, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit, that there is sort of this resistance to following God in the way that he would want us to follow, to seeing him as the type of king that he would want us to see him. Uh, there is resistance to that. But Jesus says, hey, in his Sermon on the Mount and in other places, you're either going to follow in this way or you will not follow at all. You will see this kind of king or you will not see one at all. Not one that comes by power or might, but one who comes by love and sacrifice. So we will look Sunday together at the birth of this king and how it, how it speaks to us that in his kingdom it's not first authority, Though there is authority, there is servant love that Jesus would be born, live out his life here, and even die for me. What kind of love is that? That there's sacrifice, that the king himself sacrifices for those that he leads. There's peace and love in the kingdom of God, not war and hate. And that if we're going to be a part of that, we would follow. I like what St. Augustine said about Mary. He said that Mary conceived the Christ in her heart before she conceived him in her womb. That is the invitation from this king. Will you understand and receive in your heart what it is I have come to do and how I've come to do it? A lot of fun traditions at Christmas. I hope you're observing some of those. I remember a story being told in the area where I pastored in Indiana about a tradition of nursing home Christmases that they had. And one particular year, uh, they went to the nursing home. The children all had their parts for people there. It was, a, it was a, something everyone waited for. And at the prime point of that play, they would all bow their heads, close their eyes, and somebody would slip in a baby doll, and Jesus would be born. And the nursing home residents would open their eyes and there where they would see this pretend baby that was representing Jesus. One year, somebody, for some reason, slipped in a real baby. And the point in that play came where everyone closed their eyes, bowed their heads, waited for this Jesus to be born. And when they opened their eyes, there was this new baby boy. And the kid who was playing Joseph said, how did he get in here? God has his ways, doesn't he? He has a plan, and it's not always like we would see it or do it. I hope you'll come Sunday and think in your heart a little bit about what is the way this king wants us to live out our subjectness to him, our subjectiveness to him, live out our lives being given to him. I'll see you on Sunday. I hope you have a good day.